welcome to. And uh, yeah, in regards to the, the, the markets, this will be an interesting few months with the election coming up here in November. Uh, and there's just some interesting uh, questions that we get around this time of year uh, regarding Republican, Democrat, what that does to the stock market, what, what the, has gone on in the past. So we put together this presentation uh, with what we think is some interesting information for everyone to consider as it comes to the politics of the, the stock market. So uh, I have Kevin Moore with me here and we're going to uh, uh, kind of split up this presentation. It won't be probably as long as our, our typical ones. So we'll kind of have you in and out today. But as we um, consider uh, politics, usually I like to start out these presentations with a little bit of a joke and boy, there's a lot to choose from, Kevin, when it comes to <laughs> politics jokes. For sure, yeah, so, kind of endless. Um, so maybe let's see one i'll use today uh so you know the opposite of pro is con right, mm -hmm, right sure there. so that means the opposite of progress is congress <laughs> i suppose yeah one. yeah um uh what's another one so robert held up a well-dressed man and pointed his gun yelling uh give me all your money and the man said, don't shoot, don't shoot. Don't you know who I am? I'm a U.S. congressman. So then the robber replies, fine, give me all my money. <laughs> uh, all uh, right, I, I hear you all laughing. Um, I, I can just feel it. So so that's good. Uh, if you have uh, trouble moving or seeing the slides, you can move the pictures around here in Zoom. And... Um, Afterwards, uh, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to, to email or call. Always happy to help. And without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and get into the presentation. Yep. We'll pop me up. Up. Yep, you can see the PowerPoints. You bet. Great. Okay, so uh, in regards to the the issues of today, the, the Gallup poll uh, that asked that same question really came up with some economic and some non-economic uh, issues that are at the forefront of people's minds. From an economic standpoint, uh, you've got the economy in general, uh, you've got uh, high cost of living uh, and what inflation has done recently, you've got the federal deficit, uh, followed by non-economic conditions that give people angst, uh, government poor leadership, uh, unifying the country, and democracy in general. And you look at past elections, uh, this, this isn't new. The, these aren't new issues. We've had these issues in the past, and these are just some different quotes from our forefathers uh, that basically spell out really similar issues that, that they had in regards to our government and uh, economic and non-economic issues of, of the day. So it, it's really something where there's always some type of issue going on in any type of election that can make you nervous from a market perspective. And what has always happened is the stock market is able to get past that, it's able to uh, understand the policies of whatever uh, political Democrat or Republican is in office and move forward. So in the following slides, just kind of give you some information about different presidencies, both Republican and Democrat, and what the market performance was. And this uh, goes back to uh, many different presidents dating back to 1957 to, uh, to recent. And on the vertical axis, you can see the stock market performance during their term. And on the horizontal axis, you see the GDP growth during their term. And, and both are good, right? We want high stock market performance. We want high economic growth, which leads to, to further market performance. And if you look at this black line that's kind of in the middle of the, the PowerPoint, that's about a 10% market rate of return. So anything above that means the market did better than 10%. Anything below that means the market uh, did worse than 
And then again, the farther out you go to the right, that's economic growth. So better economic growth, you can see under uh, former President Kennedy, uh, you had around 5.3% GDP growth and right about a 10% rate of return uh, from a, a market perspective. So looking at these presidencies, you can see the lion's share of the terms are above the 10% market performance line. And it's not just Republican or it's not just Democrat. Uh, it's really a mix of all of them. The two negative performance here, uh, President Nixon and former President Bush, uh, the market was was in these uh, the negative categories. But certainly the market doesn't discriminate and figures out policy, figures out um, how the companies can move forward in any political regime and then adapts to those policies. I thought that was an interesting way to show market performance and economic growth because it really paints the picture that uh, there, there's been good performance across the presidencies. Uh, the other thing when it comes to good versus bad market years, this is going to show the rolling daily one-year returns for each of those different presidents. And it gives you an idea of what was a really good year and what was a really bad year for each president. So for instance, if you look at this uh, black line here on top, that basically averages out all of these presidents. And it says sometime in their term, not every single year, mind you, but one of the years, the average return ended up being 44%. So like here under President Reagan, you can see the market performed a lot better than 44% in one of his years. On the flip side, on the downside, the bad market years for each term, the average down market year was, uh, or worst market year, I should say, not average, the worst market year in each term was down mi minus 19.4%. So again, kind of President Reagan in the, the middle, had about a 60% return his best year uh, in the stock market when he was in office. And his worst year was about minus 21 or 22%. And the rest of the years were somewhere in between. Them. So to, to think about that from a standpoint of uh, all of these different presidents ranging from Republican to Democrat, they don't look too much different. Uh, the drops look fairly similar, or the worst year where the blue line ends on the bottom looks fairly consistent, and the up years look fairly consistent. So again, just a different way to, to visualize things from a, a, a one-year rolling return performance for administration. And this is probably what I find the, the most interesting slide. When you look at staying fully invested through Republican and Democratic presidential um, terms, dating back from 1900 to now, you can see from a market standpoint, just this gray line, that just means you stay invested. You don't switch when, you don't switch to cash when one of the uh, parties is in office, you just stay invested the whole time. And if you look at it, $10,000 would have grown to about $10 million um, from 1896 specifically to now. On the flip side, if you were to only have money invested in that Dow Jones, which is the top 30 U.S. stocks, during, a, during Democratic administrations only, that's this dark blue line or Republican administrations only, that's this light blue line, you can see you wouldn't have done near as well as just staying invested, whether it's a Republican or Democrat. Uh, and that's really where we like to joke, hating the government is not a, a market strategy, it's not a financial planning strategy. Uh, so we don't want politics dictating uh, how we plan for uh, each of our clients' future. But that just shows a, a very long-term look at just staying fully invested, regardless of the term, it's done much better than just Republican or just Democrat. 
Uh, looking at uh, more recent candidates, you have uh, current President Biden, you have former President Trump. Their S&P 500 returns, if you think about from the time they started office to the time either now for President Biden or, or, or President Trump's full term, their stock market performance doesn't look that different. So minus this COVID drop here under former President Trump's term, um, their returns were pretty similar up, a, up to uh, this point here. Then you had the COVID drop. But even if you look at where we're at today, so President Biden from 0% up to about a 50% return, in the S&P 500 while he's been in office. And you look at former President Trump's full term, 0% up to about 52% after his uh, four years was over. That's just about the exact same. Now, who knows what it'll be the, the latter few months of, of the year before uh, we, we, uh, we know who the new president is. But um, for, for someone to say that the market has been much different uh, really has not been the case when you look at the S&P 500 specifically. Uh, then everyone now and again, we'll hear about um, preferences to certain sectors, depending on who gets in office. And I think it would be safe to say that under President Biden, people would have thought clean energy would have done better than oil uh, based on policy perspective. And if you look at what actually happened, uh, President Biden here is on the right side of this uh, screen here. Clean energy well underperformed during his term versus uh, oil, gas, and consumable fuels here. And this is the, this is the S&P clean energy index in dark blue. And this is the uh, S&P oil, gas, and consumable fuels index in light blue. So you can see from a standpoint of uh, a uh, area of the market that you would have thought would have done better uh, under uh, President Biden's presidency, uh, it did not. It didn't do near as well as uh, oil, gas, and consumable fuels up 250 percent in his term versus negative 20 for clean energy. On the flip side, you have um, President Trump before President Biden, you would have thought the opposite. Uh, gas, oil, consumable fuels would have done better than clean energy uh, based on policy perspective, but exact, exact opposite. You have oil and gas being down about 50% during his term, and you have clean energy being up about 150% during his term. So we really encourage people not to try and make sector bets uh, of any particular area, depending on who's in office, because what you think should happen, as you see in this picture, probably won't. Uh, and that's really where our mantra is always gonna be diversification, is not try and take any bets regardless of who's in office, because you don't know what is gonna happen whether it be from a sector perspective or just overall asset class perspective, large, medium, small size stocks, international, US. So we're really trying to diversify entire portfolios. So I am going to turn it over to Kevin and uh, Kevin, you can kind of take us home with the rest of this. Yeah, no, that sounds great. I think for some reason my, uh, my video uh, transitioned off. I don't know if you can put me as host. I think I could probably get that back on real quick. Yeah, let's see if I can do that. Uh, if not, I can always just kind of carry on. But you can you can start, and I can I can flip for you. Okay, perfect. So you know, I'll just jump right into things. I appreciate your intro there with some of the slides, John. Super interesting stuff. Um, so. You know, even though many people think that the makeup of our elected officials may have a profound effect on our economy, they're actually wrong. So as you can see on the graph, the makeup of the U.S. economy over the last, well, almost 70 years, it's really stayed pretty constant, consistent. So both government expenditures and business investments uh, have accounted for about 20% of our economy, while consumption has accounted for the bulk of um, 
of our economy of about 60%. So then another misnomer is that most people think when there's a single party rule, meaning when Republicans or Democrats control the House of Representatives, the Senate and the presidency, they think that the likelihood of passing legislation that has more significance is higher, but in reality, that's really not the case. So as you can also see um, on, the, on the chart there, that over the last 35 years, the highest percentage of significant legislation uh, being passed was actually mostly in years when there was a divided government. And again, that's where one party does not control everything. You know, It doesn't control the House, Senate, and presidency at the same time. And Kevin, you should be able to uh, be host now. If you want to try oh. and click. Oh, I oh. saw you. There, there we go. go. Thank you. Yeah, we're all good now. Appreciate that. So then when we look, think about the government, we tend to think about the federal deficit. If you look at the past 60 plus years, and this is again through a variety of administrations, you can see that it's pretty rare for us to be running a budget surplus, that really the vast majority of the time we are running a budget deficit. Now, certainly there are times when the annual budget deficit is unusually large, which most folks can remember the most recent example, and that's you know during COVID. And that was when a large amount of federal monies were really made available to help us get through the financial fallout stemming from the pandemic. Also, when we look at the amount of interest we are paying on our debt, it amounts to around 2% of our annual gross domestic product, also um, abbreviated as GDP, which can also be called national economic output, which in comparison to our GDP growth does seem pretty manageable. And then if you asked 100 people, I, you know, really my suspicion is that the vast majority would link the performance of the stock market really to the party of the current president, when in reality, monetary policy has really mattered a lot more with respect to stock market returns. So generally, the stock market has performed better when the Federal Reserve has been lowering interest rates, and that's what we call monetary easing, and that's really regardless of the party of the president. So you can see there the grade parts on the bar graph. They start back in 1993, and they represent various periods of easing, which have come with positive market returns, including parts of both Republican, like with George W. Bush and Trump, and Democrats, uh, Clinton, Obama, and Biden terms. Now, if you think the popularity of a president determines the performance, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> um, so if you think the popularity of a president determines the performance of the stock market, you're mostly wrong. When presidential approval ratings are the highest in, at over 50, the average stock market return is 6.6% a year. And that's compared to 9.3% a year when the approval ratings are between 35 and 50. So although it doesn't happen too often, when presidential appro approval ratings are between 20 and 35, in that scenario, the average stock market return has actually been a dismal negative 9.9% a year. So as of July 21st, uh, President Biden's approval rating was at 36. And then his highest approval rating dates back to 2021, or in the early part, and that was at a 57. So for what that's worth. So with all that said, as you've heard this before, we all know that by now that past performance does not guarantee future results you know, with, with the market. Okay, so interestingly, sometimes the mere timing of when an administration starts can play a role in market returns. So for instance, with both Ronald Reagan and Barack Obama, they started their terms during recessions uh, when stocks were historically cheap, uh, with conducive Federal Reserve policy and really with good demographics, they're all playing, that all played a role in really the strong returns that were realized during their presidencies. So with both Reagan and a Republican again from 1981 to 1989, and with Obama, a Democrat, from 2009 to 2017, in both cases, the U.S. stock market returned over 200%. So, at the end of the day, ingenuity and investment opportunities will likely continue to be really the main factors in the stock market performance, with less emphasis on politics. If you consider all the innovations since 2008, it's really just incredibly staggering to think about. Who would have thought that over the last few years, we would have a bionic eye available or be able to use a 3D printer to create actual objects? and yet alone be able to have cars drive for us. <laughs> also being able to use artificial intelligence on, 
uh, in our day-to-day lives with so many possibilities. And then not to mention just simply being on this webinar today with all of you is, is if you ask me, pretty wild. Um, but this type of innovation is truly remarkable and it may lead to future breakthroughs in things like disease treatment, uh, alternative energies, or just discovering technologies or industries that even today don't exist. Now the breakthroughs since 2008 and future breakthroughs will really continue to help define our economy, reminding us that although the upcoming election in November is important, whether Donald Trump or Kamala Harris wins, the stock market has historically been more concerned about investment opportunity and ingenuity. So with all that said, you know, John and I want to remind you that regardless of who wins in the fall, our focus will be on helping you obtain your short, mid, and long-term financial goals. And as part of this, we want you to know that we continue to appreciate the trust you place in us, and we look forward to continuing helping you in the months and years to come. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks for, for being on the call. If anyone wants the, these slides, we can send them to you. Just to email us. Happy to, to provide that. But I mean, the, the big thing uh, that we're always talking about from a financial planning perspective is uh, don't let who's in office ruin your day. Uh, don't <laughs> let it ruin your plan. Uh, we are always looking at uh, ways to maximize financial plans, regardless of the politics, based on tax law at the time, which is constantly changing. Um, and uh, always happy to help you sort through things. But we'll see what happens in November. It'll be interesting to see what the market does these next few months. Typically, the market in the latter part of an election year is very good. Uh, and uh, hopefully that, that stays the, the same that uh, from, from past elections. But we've had a, a good year thus far. We had a great year last year after coming off of a pretty bad 2022. But, uh, but yeah, it's uh, planning is, is about... Uh, much more full market cycles than, than just any given year or two. So appreciate your attention and uh, for getting on the call today. And like I said, if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. But we'll give you the rest of your hour back here and uh, wish everyone a great day. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye.